Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Got big updates on what's going on with the remnants of the barrel. Still bringing severe weather towards the northeast for today. Also, all that moisture getting squeezed over the southeast, trying to create a low pressure system right off the coast of Florida. Now, this is normally what we get in July. Waves form a little late. And we got to watch up close. That's normally what we get. So barrel really was very rare. So I'm going to give you the latest updates on this, plus a couple other stories. Plus, we have another storm system coming in for a Sunday. Thank you so much for everyone that hit the like and the share button on yesterday's video. I did see that. I appreciate that. Texas now has a lot of good information that they've been needing to know. So far, they did restore anywhere from five to 700,000 homes without power on who knows how many people that is and they are still working on it so i got your latest updates on that as well if you've never been here before make sure you subscribe i am all year along with my weather forecasting I always put timestamps and links in the description to help save you time and to see information for yourself now for today we do have flood watches in all of the green areas plus we have heat advisories in all of this orange but we have excessive heat watch and warning in all of this pink and dark pink for today your temperatures are going to raise all the way to 90s in the south, all the way towards the northeast into the 90s. But it's going to be bring 90s, even hundreds up towards the northwest and 110 to 115 still towards the southwest. Now, we still have the remnants of the barrel system still bringing all of the heat towards the mid-Atlantic for today. And with the heat indices, it's going to be raising and feeling like you're over 100 degrees for today and texas you're still going to feel like you're in the 90s with all this power outage that you do have and we did get power outages from yesterday so far michigan is at over 24,000 without power indiana over 16,000. there's other people without power like pennsylvania over 5,000. it just don't meet the criteria of at least 10,000 to be yellow on this diagram and you see texas is still 1.7 million without power now, Centerpoint likes to add that they have nearly 12,000 frontline workers as far as away from California, Ohio, and West Virginia to support the restoration efforts for today. Also, there's some serious flooding that happened for New Mexico yesterday, and you have more flooding chance for today and more coming soon. And we did have tornadoes yesterday, even a strong one in Indiana. So thank you to everyone that did share my video yesterday because there was some strong weather for yesterday. We got more for today. And you can see here your latest from your vorticity. You still got that big high dome of heat going on. But over here for the northeast, this is where you're going to have severe weather kicking in from the remnants of barrel. Also, you got that low pressure trying to form up right off the coast of Florida. And National Hurricane Center did put an advisor out. It's 10% in the next 48 hours, 10% in the next seven days. It won't have any time to do anything. It's just forming a quick low pressure while it gets squeezed by a high pressure. When you look for the chance just for a tropical depression, it actually gives it, when you go three to four days, it gives it all the way up to a 50, almost a 60% chance just for a tropical depression to form while you have this high pressure that's going to fling it right out through the northeast this is just going to bring some more rainfall and you can also see right here by the ensembles of the euro by the time you go through friday morning more than likely will form a little surface low right there off the coast but then it's going to go on land and be squeezed by this high pressure and just dissipate now you can see this better here as it gets squeezed by this high pressure because this high pressure is going to continue to keep squeezing and still give us that break all the way into the Gulf and the Caribbean, pushing everything into the Eastern Pacific for at least a week, maybe a little bit longer. But we still have the flooding that went for last night, the storms that's going on for today, bringing all this heavy rainfall for upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, two to three inches plus, maybe a little bit more, one inch going into Pennsylvania. But you can see that that surface load, just that area of disorganized thunderstorms, is bringing some more rainfall, a little bit towards Florida, some towards Bahamas, also for North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, even some of Jersey, as this just goes around and gets squeezed out. 
but it's still going to be bringing some flooding. It is bringing that rainfall towards Louisiana. Also, the coast of Mississippi, some of the coast of Alabama, and for the panhandle of Florida. Plus, you have more flooding happening for today from New Mexico. You have a slight risk chance for flash flooding. Also, the panhandle of Texas and as this goes into Colorado. Also, for the northeast, you're still in a slight risk all the way into Michigan. Pennsylvania, upstate New York, and New England. But now you got that moderate level risk for upstate New York, Vermont, and New Hampshire. This is where everything's just pushing further and further to the north. And as you go into tomorrow, it's going to continue over here for Arizona into New Mexico. You're going to have some along the Mid Atlantic and New England. But as you go all the way into Friday, it's going to come right back again from those remnants bringing the flash flooding. And you're going to be right back into a slight risk for flash flooding. Plus, with this next pattern coming in, it's going to bring more flooding towards Texas by the time you go into Saturday. It's going to put y'all right into the slight risk for Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, and some Mississippi and Tennessee. And that slight risk for flash flooding because you're already so soaked. Plus, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, and a little bit of Utah. You have chances for flash flooding because you have a lot of heavy precipitation coming your way on that next storm system from the 17th through the 21st remember we're still in monsoon season now for today it has upgraded again just like i showed you on colorado state university yesterday chances for tornadoes for today you have the two percent in the green the five percent in the brown and you have that ten percent right there in the yellow and this did move further to the north also so here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for today national weather service has thunderstorms associated with a tornado and isolated wind damage threat are expected today across parts of the northeast the greatest tornado risk will be over southwest and south central new york an isolated wind damage threat is also expected to develop across parts of new mexico in west texas and you can see this here you also got the wind threat in the northeast you have the five percent and the 15 percent also you got that five percent for new mexico and west texas here's your cities and states at risk for the possible damage and winds today really squeezing a lot of moisture over here in the northeast and look at your dew points as you go from 2 p.m it starts raising up in this very strong very dense 70 dew points all you need is 55 to have severe thunderstorms and look how this big dense line of 70s high 70s at that kicks across pennsylvania and western new york and as you go through the evening it keeps persisting through the east a lot of humidity a lot of strong dew points up in your region this will create a lot of storms also you lift you got a lot of strong temperatures for today you got a lot of convection and you got a lot of lift for these thunderstorms to feed on and to grow all through the evening so now you can see as you go through the evening, once you start around 2 o'clock, you start getting a lot of strong cells start moving through and it gets stronger as the day builds along, even over here from Maine and New Hampshire. Now when you look at your significant tornado perimeters, you can see those cells has a strong chance to become a potential tornado. Also these over here towards New Hampshire, Vermont and Maine. So you got to watch for this whole line of storms. It's not just going to be for a little bit. You're going to start getting these strong ones that's coming right on shore. And it's going to carry all the way across. And those are bringing chances for tornadoes for today. Showing very strong signatures. And also through Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine as you go through the afternoon. Now after you go through the early afternoon, the second portion that moves through y'all is just going to be some thunderstorms. Maybe bringing some winds with that. Also showing your winds aloft. We'll start getting them thunderstorms roaring as you're going through the early afternoon. And it will stretch into New England as you go through the night also. Bringing some hail threats towards Pennsylvania, mostly still showing eastern Pennsylvania on that line of storms. And you can see how a lot of this hail is starting to go more and more northern. So Canada, you need to be aware of some possible storms passing through, bringing you some hail. Upstate and western New York, mostly western New York, looks like the biggest chance for hail. Also for the northern half of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, chances for hail today. Remember, we are going to be on this big high pressure of heat right here, just circling around and bringing this trough around as we go through the coming days. Then the high pressure is going to expand out, just like the update I showed you yesterday. If you didn't see that video up here in the right corner, you got a little white arrow. Click on that and you will see the latest update of what is expected. So you can see we do get some storm systems that start moving in from Saturday into Sunday, just revolving around this high ridge over here with this jet stream 
and then maybe might even go in a little bit into Monday. Not really showing a big promise, but maybe the intercoastal northeast might get something as those storms come across. Showing so far, we have a 15% risk for Sunday for that storm system. This is your cities and states at risk so far, but you can see the wide area. This will fine tune as we get closer. Still showing that this big high pressure is going to be boss in 72 hours from National Hurricane Center going all the way into the Gulf. The same high pressure that's going to squeeze that little disturbance over the Bahamas by Florida is going to be the same high pressure to expand out, bringing all these tropical waves, four tropical waves still passing through. We got all this dust, all this expanded high pressure still showing all that's going to go into the eastern Pacific at least for a week. You can see this on the latest update with global tropics all the way from the 17th to the 23rd expecting a cyclone in eastern pacific also as we go through the end of july from the 24th through the 30th still expecting something in the eastern pacific after that we're going to start getting some of these riders that's going to ride around the high pressure as the high pressure starts receding back and this could bring potential threats towards the southeast and you can see this on the euro still expecting maybe that might form a front end too slow and go off into the atlantic after that we got some storms some waves that's going to be passing through central america just like i just showed you then after that when we go from the end of july towards the beginning of august good potential for these waves to start curving around at high pressure that is more likely going to be right here retracting back and moving away from this direction and going towards the Atlantic and really opening things right back up again. Now you can see that this high pressure is going to be retracting back as you go from the middle of July going towards the 19th of July. Getting some favorable environment start moving in even starting to get strong. And then as you go towards the beginning of August starting to show a lot of lift a lot of favorable environment coming off the MDR our main development region right where barrel came from. Our latest update on our potential velocity anomaly shows right here that we have something strong coming as we go towards the end of July, showing this will be into the eastern Pacific. We also have something into the high teens, also showing this will be into the eastern Pacific. But as we go by the 20s, showing that we need to watch this particular area, something could spin up kind of quick. And you can see the same thing with the euro on the long range. So you see you have something forming up sometime into the teens, Showing that is Eastern Pacific, also the one at the beginning of August, Eastern Pacific. But if you take a look, we have all these little white sections that's popping up right here into the 20s. Normally, this is nothing. Normally, when we talk about barrel coming, I would have seen a bunch of this. Instead, what I saw was a bunch of this. That's why I'm still so amazed that that popped up, that Ural did not see that. Euro never has that problem, especially on something so big and so long staying here doing so much damage. It showed this when it had Barrel come out bringing something that did like this. So we will watch these just to make sure another one of these don't form. Still show not only the high pressure expanding, you still got all this dust that's going to be coming through also through Texas as well. And maybe in the teens start getting a tropical wave where it starts to come a little further to the north where the high pressure is retracting back. So I will watch this period of time. So far it's showing I don't have enough time. It just gets pushed out. That's been the trend. Still, I will stay updated on it. Thank you for your time, everybody. I appreciate every single one of y'all. All we have for the next few days, other than these top stories I just talked about, is pretty much just the heat going on and maybe another storm system moving in for Sunday and Monday. So I will keep you updated. Endure that heat. I know it's pretty strong and we have more heat coming in. Remember that update yesterday? Another heat dome coming in. But other than that, severe weather is going to start milding down a little bit. I hope y'all get your power on very quickly. I'm from the south. I know how this is with no power and all that humidity, all that heat heat that you just feel every time you just breathe hope y'all do feel better remember those temperatures are taken in the shade before you go second timothy two one through three thou therefore my son be strong in the grace that is in christ jesus and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you again for all your time. Hope you have a very great day. And remember, all glory does go to God, our Father, Yahweh, in heaven. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life and your families and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. And remember to endure. <laughs>